Well, there you have it. Eric Holder making it formal uh, and official. He is stepping down as Attorney General of the United States, but he isn't going right away. He's going to allow the president time to pick a successor. And uh, the clock is ticking here because uh, many Democrats fear if the president uh, doesn't make a choice and soon uh, he might miss the opportunity uh, to have a Democratic Senate for now deciding on it. The growing fear building, of course, that the Republicans could control that body uh, after the midterm elections. We shall see Rick Santorum joining us right now, former Republican senator and uh, presidential candidate. Uh, so he's out. What will his legacy be, Senator? What do you think? Well, I mean, I, I think he ticked through his legacy. I mean, he is someone who, um, who went into that office as uh, he described President Obama with a great deal of idealism, with a, uh, a, a, uh, an agenda. Uh, I, I find that sort of hard to believe that an attorney general uh, should come into the office of being the chief law enforcement man uh, to come in with a political agenda. But it's very, very clear from the, his own statement. He's very proud of that. He's very proud of the fact that he went out and, and advanced certain causes that he believed were, quote, just. Uh, that's, uh, in, in my mind, not the role of an attorney general. The role of the attorney general is to be uh, just that, someone who is to, uh, to oversee the laws, to execute those laws, to faithfully uh, defend the laws. He mentioned, uh, President Obama mentioned the Defense of Marriage Act, which he's been vindicated. Well, at the time, it was the law of the land, and he had an obligation to defend it, but he refused to do so. Why? Because he had his own personal opinions were in his mind, supreme to his duty uh, to, uh, to follow uh, the, uh, the dictates of his office. That's, I think, going to be his legacy. That he's, tried, he's in, in many respects, transformed that office into a much more political office than it ever has been. Well, on the left and the right, both sides agree that he's certainly been consequential. Republicans like yourself certainly don't uh, flip over the, the consequences of that stewardship, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I guess the question now is his successor and this rush of the clock here to, to, to find someone while the Democrat Senate still exists. I mean, the growing fears among Democrats, as you know, Senator, that might not be the case uh, next year. W what do you think? Well, you know, no matter what happens, the Democrats are going to control the Senate in, in the lame duck session and have the rule in place that uh, confirmations can be uh, approved by the Senate with 51 votes. So I, we should I stress that when Republicans take over, it, goes, it reverts back to a vote of 60 to do that. Right? It, it could. I mean, you it know, could. certainly the Republicans uh, may say, you know, hey, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And uh, but probably not, given the fact that the president is a, is a is a Democrat. So you're right. They're more likely to revert back to 60 votes to make the hurdle higher for the president right now. But I, I don't. I'd be surprised if the president waits too long. I mean, there's certainly uh, a lot of internal machinations that they're going to go through. But I suspect by, by November, when the lame duck comes back, they'll have a nominee and uh, they'll probably be able to get that nominee through. I'm, I'm wondering uh, whether the, 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 that nominee would have to clean up a lot of the messes that you alluded to, that then the Democrats don't call them messes, but investigations that never went anywhere. Well, well it was the, the Justice Department screening out reporters that were considered hostile to it. James Rosen, uh, or James Rosen experienced that. Uh, or whether it, 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 it just sort of ignored what was going on at other agencies, including the IRS. Uh, whether that person coming in will have to look into these things or just move on dismiss these things. Uh, what do you think? I suspect that the president will put in someone who will continue to do what Eric, look, Eric Holder was not a lone wolf on this. He wasn't someone who was acting, uh, you heard the, 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 the closeness of the relationship, uh, the longevity between the two of them. He was an early supporter of the president. He shared the president's vision for this office. He executed the office exactly the way the president wanted to. I think that's one of the reasons you see uh, the, the, uh, the obvious sincerity of uh, the heartfelt uh, uh, sentiments that the president had in, in, in a holder leaving. So I think you're going to see very much the same. Whoever it is is going to have the same uh, marching orders and I suspect you'll find someone who's rather close to the president, someone who's a good confidant that will continue this, uh, this, this same type of behavior. Senator Rick Santorum, good seeing you again, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure.